<laughs> Welcome to the 70s, Aussie Tech Heads 572. How are you going? It's uh, 22nd of February 2018, and it's another week, another another hour or so full of text news stories and maybe opinions and views. So uh, sit back, relax, and uh, put your earbuds in and go to sleep or whatever you do while you listen to us. Driving cranes, driving trucks, uh, oh, whatever. I, I think I was listening to Aussie Tech Crypto in the car the other day. I got through about That's two episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a crash. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But um, yeah, so it's we are Bitcoin that had the crash, son. <laughs> That's right. Good, good work. Uh, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au and now brought on board the old uh, quickest way to make a web page is through the site pad. Uh, if you sign up to the pro and business plan, site pad comes free. So essentially, you can make a, a really, really nice uh, web page for free. Uh, it's got all the things your Google Maps, it's got a contact data. It's got all that sort of stuff you can plug and play or or you just, you know, re-click and drag and whatever uh, to the... It's easy. It's basic. It's called SitePad. If you've got an account, jump in there and uh, look in the control panel for SitePad. You'll be right. All right. There, but And as Jace was just saying before, yeah, Drupal. Uh, no Drupal in the 70s. No Joomla or WordPress. You see, uh, WordPress, 25% of the world's blogs or wor- uh, websites is WordPress. That's amazing. But let's get uh, into I- introducing some of these co-hosts so they can all chime in and uh, have a bit of a yak on some of these amazing stats and topics I'm bringing up. Uh, Jace, he's jostled. There was jostling before the show, but uh, Jace has come in at number one. Hello, Jace. There you go. I'm here. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. Uh, how's your week I been? I think it's like 20, 26 or 27% now. Yeah, right. That's uh, it's it's uh, crazy, isn't it? It's uh, it's massive. I think they're going for fifty percent in the next, I don't know, five or ten years or something. Yeah, that's great. And uh, Jordan, how you doing, Jordan? I'm good, mate. And you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Now we missed you last week. We were all teed up to raring to go, get you on, and uh, your computer crashed. So uh, you yeah. Said, so obviously it looks like yeah, yeah, you're, you're did back a Windows on board. update and um, went to do a restart and. You know, I didn't. I, it was kind of my fault because I didn't let it restart on its own. I'm thinking, why does this take it so long? And I hit uh, the restart. So that, that probably old, duped me. That old chestnut, eh? I know. So I had to stick the, re- the Windows disk back in and recover it. It had damaged the boot. Um, the boot petition of the, you know, you have the boot files for Windows 10 on the boot. The boot petition. Yes. Yes. Boot manager. So it had damaged that. So Windows was fine. It was just that initial boot. It couldn't find the boot at all it just came up with a, a you know the, the dos screen with the flashing cursor well it's good to see you're back alive anyway so it's good now uh lucky. <laughs> yes the aussie tech radio you all know what that is uh tune in radio app cross platform download it on your preferred device and and search up aussie tech radio you can also get the show the the actual podcast us me right now and us uh, if you search up aussie tech heads on tune in radio and also on spotify uh, like us on Facebook uh, dot com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and YouTube dot com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. New rules for YouTube uh, just came out this month that you need one thousand subscribers and four thousand hours per year of views uh, before you can monetize. So that's going to uh, sort the the chaff from the hay. I think uh, mm. we went out the we won't have what, that we, problem. No, we we would play so many millions every week. <laughs> yeah, we went out the door of the chaff. <laughs> So <laughs> we're gone. So I was I was getting used to that fifty cents every two years. You know, <laughs> I, was, I you re- needed it. Yeah, I was relying on it. You know, that's the, you that's... Put, that, put that on your Bitcoin. Well, I could have. It's the only time I could afford a stamp to post me dear old mum a letter. So yeah. now that's gone out the window. <laughs> yeah, my stamps have gone up now too. So you have to wait two years. Oh, it's crazy. That's right. They, they are about a dollar. When's the last time I sent a letter? Uh, yeah, so other shows, Aussie Max Own records on about a Monday, I think it is, and that just pops up in the iTunes, YouTube, or your favourite podcatcher, and oh, going gangbusters, somebody stop them, please, Aussie Tech Crypto, how good That's is that, how, how good are you going, Jace? Really good, we had an interview this week from the founder of the Australia Coin. Oh, excellent. Well, I think I'm about two episodes behind, but uh, I'm going for another drive tomorrow, so I'll, uh, <laughs> I know what I'll be go. listening to. Uh, yes, so Aussie Tech Crypto on YouTube uh, and also on the iTunes or, or your favourite podcatcher. So that's nice. Good work. What, so what are you up to about episode seven, six or seven? Six. And uh, I, I noticed I did listen to episode two. You ran through all my questions I had, so that was very, very nice. Thank you. Now I'm more right. enlightened. 
<laughs> uh, the how, enlightenment. How is the how is all the coins going? How's Ripple? It's still about a dollar twenty seven. So yeah, they're slowly starting to pick up now that they got over the January dip, which happens every year, and then people panic sell and lose a lot of money because they panic sell. But mm. those kind of people don't want to invest in shares or anything either because when they go down, they panic sell, and it's just going to be the same thing. If you haven't learned anything about investing from shares, you can't, you apply the same sort of principles to crypto. Mm. Yes, yeah. I know, like, what amazes me, and I haven't really wrapped my head around it yet, is that they're saying, you know, all these companies are going to uh, employ the blockchain or the crypto mechanism, the blockchain way of doing things to, for, for different yep. outputs, like, it's like say, the, say, the voting. Like, say, they make yep. sure no one votes twice, and they're going to use the bit chain or blockchain technology i don't really understand i've got my head around that how that all works well, the, the main thing is once it's once it's been written in the cryptographic database it can't be changed at all hackers can't get in there to change it you can't edit your vote bob down the road can't change your vote it's got your name and details on there and that's there forever right right but yeah but see then i, I still don't this it's only just zeros and ones somewhere on I don't even know where it is. Terribly complicated, Glenn. <laughs> it is complicated. That's why I haven't got my head around. That's why I've got to keep listening to the show, you know, Aussie Tech Crypto. All right, if you want to get us on Twitter, on Twitter, you can email us, uh, Warlock, Glenn, or Jordan at AussieTechEds.com.au. Now, look, I put my sign on. Last week, I didn't have the power to my sign. There it is. Right there, see? Ah, sweet. But uh, look, it won't flash. Well, it does flash, but if I flash, it doesn't come out on the video. So there you go. So uh, it, all, it blurs a bit. But anyway, good stuff. So, um, it's very perfect. yeah, so now okay, that's it. So that's good. So, yeah, you should get a sign that says online instead of on air. To, yes, to yeah, that'd be good. Well, online, yes, yeah. streaming. Yeah, oh, are streaming. you really on air? streaming? Are we on air? That's right, streaming. Yeah, yeah that'd be really the on. Time. We're not on airwaves now. No, I'll talk to Steve. We've got that. that on the um, Aussie Tech Crypto website. If we're ever streaming the show to Twitch and we're recording it. If you go to the website up the top, it'll have now recording or now streaming up the top. Nice. Very good. Oh, I wish I could do websites like that. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I'll, I have a word to Steve, the guy who makes the signs. Uh, if you want to get grab a sign, he's uh, better tell him, better tell you it's the webpage, lightmeupsigns.com, and just follow your nose and you'll get to his eBay account or something and you'll be able to get one. All right, what's been going on this week? It's been pretty light on information and stories been pretty boring so uh we'll see how we go i've got a google project zero discloses a microsoft edge bug oh jordan you, you'd be devastated wouldn't you a, an edge bug oh, hey i have a lot of hope i have a lot of hope <laughs> a lot of hope for windows i really do <laughs> i know we all do now details so what happens is google's got this little team and they they go around looking for problems and they found a problem uh with edge uh, that on September uh, November seventeen last year, and they say they give the say the the coders or the company who made the product ninety days to fix it up to patch it. Otherwise, they release what they've found to the wild, and it's a bit of a ha ha sucked in. You didn't patch in time, so this will make you hurry up now, sort of thing. So anyway, uh, yeah, good. So they, it's a non negotiable ninety day period. Google, they they put the hammer down, bring the hammer down. Uh, Project Zero usually gives companies an extension of 14 days uh, on that 90 day window if a patch is close but microsoft wasn't even anywhere near it apparently so a note from microsoft was uh the fix is more complex than initially anticipated and it is very likely that we will not be liable to meet the february release deadline due to these memory management issues so i did a little bit of think about, about this one and i'm thinking well Essentially, is is Google holding Microsoft to ransom of of some description, uh, well, not financial, but maybe uh, uh, goodwill, or make themselves, or making making themselves look good by yeah, so, proving that they're secure by demanding everyone else be secure. Yeah, like a goodwill ransom, you know. And I mm. think, and I thought, oh, I don't know, you know, like is it Edge on Android still very new, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but I think they're just talking about this is not just on Android. I think this is just Edge, isn't it? In general, on your on your computer. So uh, yeah, I wasn't too sure, you know, how to uh, sort on of what computer on a Windows computer or yeah. on a Google computer. No, on Windows. Windows. Google, but Google wouldn't demand the patches 
for, for a Windows operating system. Well, that's their problem. With. But they do. That's why they, they demand, uh, and, the, and the stick they hold is the fear that they release to everyone, all the hackers, what the floor is. So oh. they can go and I hack. You were talking about maybe some sort of Google operating system, whether it be Android or or Google Desktop or whatever it's called. Uh, Google's just got a research team that finds security vulnerabilities in all sorts of applications on different platforms, and they tell people, "Hey, we found this," and give them ninety days to fix it. And if they don't, they're just like, "Well, we got to tell people that there's a problem there; it needs to get fixed. And if you guys are not going to do it officially, then..." We're going to release our details so that uh, somebody can do something about it. Mm. Maybe it'll maybe it'll prod you a bit to pull your finger out and get it done because mm. there's going to be zero days and people are going to be hacking. But apparently, this uh, a bit of the pressure to put on somewhere. Yeah, apparently, but this like it's probably a good thing in a way. Uh, and maybe what the reason why Microsoft was a bit slow is that it, apparently it's not a real. A problem like it's not on the scale of problems it wasn't a big problem uh so an attacker who uses the floor to get control via a web page that edge just loaded can't modify executable code that's already memory normal hang on what's all this uh yeah so an attacker who's uses the floor to get so an attacker can use the floor to get control of the web page that's just been loaded into memory uh, so while this hole doesn't give crooks a direct way to take over your browser immediately, Edge users can regard it as a vulnerability that could make a bad thing worse rather than a bad thing in the first place. So mm. that's probably why Microsoft was a bit, you know, oh yeah, put it on the back burner, you know, uh, for a little while. But uh, yeah, but 90 days, you still think, you know, if there's a problem, fix it. So when was the story, when was this story released? Did you say... A year ago, did you say? Or no, last couple of days. My last couple of, yeah. Yeah, the bug or the flaw was identified by Google on the 17th of November, and then the 90 days... November. Yeah, November last year. 90 days has just expired, and Microsoft yep. said, we uh, we can't do it, we haven't had a chance to do it, and Google as well, here you go. There's, Jeez, the, there's, oh, I don't know. there's the flaw. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, uh, I don't know, Patch Tuesday. When's that coming up? In a couple of weeks. So two weeks, there should be a uh, hopefully a patch out for it, but it's not not a big one. So that's probably why it went on the back burner. Cool. All right. But I tell you, they release a lot of really good updates quite regularly for for Edge anyway. I reckon. Yeah, I don't mm. particularly use Edge. Every time, I, you know, every time I get it out, there's you know some new things happening, or their updates have been pretty good with Windows as well. I reckon. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Like, I think like Windows, you get updates every month, don't you? So it's it's that's not yeah. too bad. It's pretty good. You got Sometimes the. That's, it's, no, it's noticeable things though. It's not always just, you know, security fixes and things. It's it's little things that you just you see changes happening almost right there in front of you. Mm. I think there was a little issue the other month when you you logged into Windows, and you had to log in twice. The page that your login screen just refresh and then you log in again and it would work. So yep. well, that was happening to me. Well, I'm that sure. happens to me all the time anyway. Oh, <laughs> <no. laughs> yeah. you, you might need you might need oh, an update. I, I, I just think it's a flat battery or something. Oh, yeah. Stupid mouse and try again anyway. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's okay, what... Okay, so this, this one's related to the just-in-time compiler that compiles JavaScript. So what it would do, it would download some code, stick it in the area of memory and not use it just at the moment, and then um, hackers or whoever could put some other code in that space in memory and then the just-in-time compiler would okay, say, okay, now go execute that, and it might not be what you thought you were, what it we thought was supposed to be executing at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Some actually. other process in there. In the old days, that it was mostly just, oh, someone's going to hack my computer and serve ads so that they can make Google revenue, but now you can, in JavaScript, people are putting uh, coin miners for crypto and using people's CPUs to mine coins, and <laughs> it doesn't matter if you got, you know, uh, you you might not notice, and everybody in your household might have it, and they might not notice. Computer might go a little bit slower, but if you've got thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of people around the world, you've got this little program running on there. It's enough to start generating some good revenue for these bad people. Yeah, they're doing that with phones too, aren't they? Yeah, with everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that's... servers like people who have their own servers and things wouldn't know what's happening. So like the Apparently, big... the tes- Tesla cloud servers we use for yes. crypto mining. <laughs> really? Oh, you yeah. think Tesla would be on top of that, wouldn't you? Yeah, the well. The forefront of technology. 
Well, there was a story also uh, about, uh, you know, the, how the AWS buckets, they're, they're apparently they're still going, getting hacked or whatever because people haven't secured them up. But it's something, because I've got a couple of buckets myself and I just got to, because I went, I had a look at it the other day and they're marked as private, but I, somehow I just don't think that's enough. I think there must be something else I've got to do. Yeah, they released a tool that used to be yes. a paid enterprise only tool, oh. and now anyone can use it on their bucket and then say, make sure this definitely have all of the um, secure options turned on. Because I think you could create one and then you could copy those settings to another one, but it didn't necessarily set up the security settings and people know, didn't double check that. So suddenly their databases and spreadsheets with passwords and phone numbers and credit cards were all just published. Mm. But talking about uh, Amazon, they've overtaken Microsoft in market capitalization. So I think, <laughs> yes, it's a uh, big business. I think now it goes Apple, Amazon, Microsoft. So uh, it's, uh, there. it's certainly going crazy. Amazon is, yeah, is officially the third most valuable company in the US and has just surpassed Microsoft for the first time. Uh, they are now worth Amazon uh, US dollars, $702.5 billion. Man, what would you Glenn, do? Yeah. Billion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> billion. Now, I just think, you know, so, you, can, you can only fantasize, fantasize, can't you? Like what it'd be like to be a billionaire. Like, you know, you just do anything you wanted I to do. I want to be a billionaire so <laughs> yeah. bad. Sorry. We've got I'm a singer excited. on the show. Yeah. He's getting a bit excited. Do you do horses? <laughs> yeah. No. No. So, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only, Nate, when, only when people demand it. Most musicians I know go, not again, please, not again. <laughs> but usually people demand it at some point. And, yeah. and hey, Glenn, you know the um, best stocks for investing? No. It's called Fang. Fang? Fang? Yep. Get Smart's dog. F F A A N G, yeah. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Oh, no, Microsoft. Fang, Fang stock. Oh, yeah, man. Microsoft are losing it, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Well, but anyway, I think like Ooh, Cloud. Marcus, I feel sorry for them. Oh no! Look, I think Cloudwise they're they're still doing great guns with their oh, Azure. Yeah, they're doing great. Mm. They're doing great. Like because I, I tried to like like with the web hosting and everything. Like I've got the backups that go out to the Amazon Cloud, uh, so it's off you know off uh, off premise to where the server is. And you have a go at that duplicated, did you? That I was telling you about the other week. No, I haven't. No, that was the, that. I wanted to use that for just the desktop computer in the office. Oh, right. But uh, but I was talking to Jordan. That this is a pretty good, actually, bit of a tip. Uh, duplicatey was it? Was it called duplicatey? Duplicatey with an I. Yeah. So it, duplicate, duplicate, take off the e, put an I. Now look, I'll, I'll even bring this up because this was quite interesting. Duplicatey, because like I use it, I use it all the time to back up my stuff to my own servers. But you can use it to. Um, pretty much any cloud, drop, Dropbox, OneDrive. I nearly said SkyDrive then. Oh, um, no, don't say that. Yeah. Now, uh, OneDrive, all of them pretty much. Now, this is... F and FTP as well and SFTP and yeah, um, so, web and all those things. So this is uh, software that you download. It's open source. You can throw on your computer. And if you've got a cloud, uh, some cloud space somewhere, you can just use that and use this software to send your files to this cloud space now you probably it's a little bit like crash plan I was, yeah i was gonna say it's like the, the software is like crash plan so it sits on your computer and you select what files and folders that you want to sync or upload and away it goes pretty probably yeah, and, just... and it encrypts it before it sends it so mm. if you can store it on the remote cloud encrypted so nobody at the other end if you've got your own servers and you want to share with friends like you would do on Crash Plan, they can't look at your files or anything because they're all encrypted. Yes, and look, and, and it's free, which is good. And look, I think the software is pretty good. Like, well, you've been using it for a little while. And, I've been using it for ages. Yeah, that's right. I and, just um, I, I just put a USB drive in my computer and and let it run a backup, hmm. and then I just take the USB drive up to my mum's place actually, where I've got a little S um little FTP just FileZilla server just running on her desktop, and I just um connect to that and continue the backups just change the directory or the destination where the backup goes mm. yeah so and then continue but you know you might be thinking oh well this is an easy way for you to do online backup okay so that's that's the bottom line yeah. but don't yeah. worry about the prices of amazon you know you get yeah, there's online you google amazon online calculator or something like that and you'll get their calculator but like you you could probably store 500 gig probably maybe cost you 
maybe fifteen dollars a month, something like that. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And they only charge they only charge you and sync the differences, so it's not like you're syncing your whole computer every month. It just has oh, bandwidth wise, yeah. yeah. All of those mm. all of, and price wise at Amazon storage, they'll just look at your computer, see what's changed updated on Amazon. That's how most of these things work. But I think Glenn should be uh, supporting our uh, brothers across the sea there and get an account at Mega. It says it also supports. What was that one? Uh, Mega. Mega.nz. Kim, Kim.com. Oh, right. Is he into backing up now, is he? Oh, yeah. He's always been storage. That's been his problem was that the stuff that people oh, were storing yes. on there were movies and things. Yes, right. Yes. Is he in, Amer- he's in America now, isn't he? Or where is he? Where is he? I think he's still fighting from New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Had a nice house by the look of it. Um, and just to try and say what, what Jason was just, just saying there, if you can, if you back 500 gig up, it's incremental after that, just to back that up. Yeah. That's what you're saying. So yes. if you back up 500 gig and then, you know, the next the next day you want to back up 20 meg, it'll just back up the 20 meg. It's going to re-back it all up again. It's incremental each day as it grows. Now, does does the duplicate go to uh, mega Megadon or whatever it's called. I don't know what that website yeah. is. It does, does it? And but you uh, know what? If you do your research, a lot of those companies like like Dropbox and that, I don't know if Dropbox do it, but a few of them I've seen over the years do actually offer a web dev um, backup solution as part of their cloud. You know, if you Google it and search mm-hmm. it, you'll find it too. And then you can use web dev. Or maybe they'll offer SFTP as an extra thing or something somehow. Yeah, so this is pretty good because I've had a little issue with Crash Plan. Uh, ever since I moved, they closed down the home version of and they things. They want to charge you. That's the issue. Oh no, no, I was paying, and so, but they closed down the home version of it, and they said, "Well, yep. we're just pushing everyone to the pro version, which wasn't too much more expensive anyway." Uh, but because it just it just didn't connect because I had mapped drives. Like and I I didn't put the because I got a free NAS and I didn't I didn't can't be bothered going through the trouble of you know um, installing the crash plan on that because you have to make a jail or something and and put all this in here and do command line stuff oh, that's too that's too much and so what you know crash plans were for me for ten years and all of a sudden it stops and so I had a bit of an issue that's why I was uh yeah pretty keen on this duplicating so have a look well, at that that's a tip one of the thing week. I loved about crash plan is that that ability to share like. Um, with friends so you can rather than using crash plan servers you can you can back up to a friend and, or a friend can let you back mm. up to them and in turn you can let them back up to you so you're kind of joining your friends together like you do on facebook kind of thing but that's the only thing that duplicated doesn't have is a server um, its own server side kind of application that you can install somewhere and back up to it that's why you've got to have the yeah the cloud the drop Oh, well, I think that's an easier, that's that's the best solution. I love it. I don't care about, I'd rather uh, back up to Amazon rather than, say. Your own choice, where you want to put your data. Or backing up to just even some server in Sydney. Like the beauty that it's encrypted before it goes, it means that nobody can spy on your data from the other end. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, to- it's totally, it's, it's good. It's a good tip. Uh, thanks for, thanks mm. for uh, alerting me to that bit of software. Uh, so, yeah, just quickly to finish off on this Amazon Microsoft uh, thing. The you know, uh, Amazon car, yeah. So Apple is worth eight hundred and forty nine point two billion, and Google or Alphabet is worth seven hundred forty four point eight billion. Microsoft holds the fourth place at the close of market on Wednesday. Uh, CNBC dubbed Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos the richest man of all time, who has beated, uh, beated, who has uh, beat Bill Gates, who had an estimated estimated fortune of 100 billion in 1999. Uh, Bezos holds 78.9 million shares of Amazon stock and uh, currently has an estimated worth of 118 billion dollars. So there you go. <laughs> so uh, yes, so uh, yeah, I'll, look I'll I'll finish off with my musings of what it'd be like to billionaire but to be a yeah, a billionaire but it'd be very good. I want to be a billionaire. Imagine all the, <laughs> just imagine all the things you could start. You know, like little businesses or little ventures. You know, just to, for fun. You could do one that goes to space and one that does electric cars and then send the electric car to space. Yeah, or build a clock. You know. Yeah, like <laughs> ten thousand year clock. Yes, I don't even know what that was. What is? Do you know anything about that? 
I didn't read that much no. into it. <laughs> but I think, um, was it Bezos or Amazon was building this 10,000-year clock? I didn't even go into the story because it was just too much of a spin out. I won't be here in 10,000 years, so didn't matter. All right. Uh, if they have another one of those millennium bugs or whatever they call it in 10,000 years' time where the clock doesn't flick over and everything blows up. Oh, that'd be right. Yeah. And you know what happened in 2000 when we were supposed mm-hmm. the world was going to blow up because the clocks weren't going to click over to 2000? Yeah. I'm, st- I'm still eating that spam. So, <laughs> uh, all right. The, the, clock, the clock is in a hollowed out mountain in Texas that Jeff Bezos intends for a Blue Origin spaceport with a goal of building a mechanical clock that will run for 10 millennia. Wow. The actual idea for the clock comes from Danny Hillis, who originally proposed a 10,000 year clock in 1995 in Wired as a way to think about long term future of humanity and the planet. The idea grew into the clock of the long now a project by the Long Now Foundation, which Hillis went on to co-found to build an actual working version of the clock. The group began to build a couple of prototypes, but uh, Bezos's clock, which Hillis is designing, will be the first to function on full scale. The team has spent the last few years machining parts for the clock and drilling through the mountain to store the components. Bezos announced in the tweet that installation machinery has been done on the 500-foot-tall mechanism. It could be cool. It could have good, good purposes. First clock you can read from space. Yeah. Put it, put it on Just the wall. Just in case you're out there, look out, look out the window of your spacecraft. Oh, yeah, it's about a quarter to 12. Time will be more accurate. You look at history. We can never completely accurately, you know. What, tell the time? Until we got atomic clocks. Now, when we go back and we try and figure it out, you know. But if, if you had that going all the time, imagine what people in thousands of years of time will be able to say about our history accurately. Is it going to be digital? Or is it, oh, it's going to have hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, something else that is happening in tech. It'll probably be, it'll probably be, be a hologram, you know, like something out of Star Trek. It might be. But Jordan, the time. <laughs> you, you've got, Jordan, you've got something about uh, some, some new tech in shopping trolleys. Yeah, that kind of amused me, actually. But, you know, I put that in the show notes and now why can't I click on it? Oh, there we go. First time putting it in the show notes, see? Oh, I know. Special. Testing special my, times. Testing. I um, haven't really read this. I just kind of, like I said, was scoffing down my dinner and thought, this looks interesting. So New Zealanders will be the first in the world to trial new artificial intelligence technology that brings the checkout to the trolley. Oh. I like the sound. Uh, when they shop for groceries at the food stuff store in coming months, c- consumers will be able to use a shopper solution provided by the New Zealand based ar- artificial intelligence company, IMAGR. But it, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, retrofitted to the shopping baskets and carts, Smart Cart recognizes products as soon as they are placed inside, eliminating the need for barcodes, checkouts, and queuing. To activate Smart Cart, shoppers simply download an app and link the payment method to their account. In store, they pair their smartphone with the shopping trolley or basket. As they add products to their cart, the items are recognised and appear on their phone's uh, virtual basket, removing traditional barcode barcode scanning and checkout processes altogether. Mm, That's not the source code on the whiteboard behind, is it? Oh, you would hope not. (laughs) All right. Uh, Yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? But isn't it? It'll get rid of completely get rid of barcodes and checkout chicks. Sorry, girls. And checkout, well, which is really upsetting. Getting rid of the checkout chicks. We've only got one now instead of ten. Yes, yes. Well, everyone's got the self service, haven't they? Like, well, you know, you go. Yeah. I don't know about and you guys. You guys. And I feel have, sorry if there's a guy there that's a checkout chick. I, I'm sorry for calling you a checkout chick. Probably chick anyway. We can't, we can't say checkout chicks anymore, can we? There's probably we've got to say checkout blokes as well. Yeah, well, no, I've only seen the checkout check. chicks. Now, yeah, so have I. I'm not going to get it. <laughs> but, I'll get myself in trouble. Next I was a checkout bloke at Kmart a couple of times. Were you? Don't, check out got, boy or check out bloke? New, Newcastle and Sydney. Do, don't, don't the guys just call themselves checkout chicks anyway? Because that's what... Well, they should, I reckon. I never what... call myself anything. <laughs> Except for, yeah, is it time to go home yet? <laughs> you know, when, you, when it all boils down to it, when, you know, a chick isn't a chick at like a baby. Like a yeah. baby chicken, a chick. That's right. Chick. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So yeah, so if you're a checkout boy or a checkout girl, you're new, you know, you're young. Check out chicken. Chick. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, nice looked, cover. that looked like pretty good, uh, 
pretty good idea, yeah. that, doesn't it? Yeah. So what I was going to ask you guys is, I don't know if it's like this down in your Kmart's, but up here at Rabina Kmart, they, they've moved the checkouts from the front of the store. The uh, yeah. The put them in the middle. Yeah. Everywhere. What is it's the, terrible. What does it go it's with terrible that? terrible idea. They Where say it's be because be. they want you to buy more stuff. Well, that's what they say, whether it actually works, I don't know, but they say... Yeah, but wouldn't you think that... You buy more stuff on the way out. Well, that's right. Like, for the time you walk from the middle of the store to the door, you might have found another three things. But... And you go back. <laughs> go back and line up again. Yeah. But, you know, everywhere's got the, you know, the self-serve machines these days, haven't they? And I think we're all getting used to those. Um, I've got to call the lady over every every time because I don't know something doesn't weigh properly yeah, on the machine. You know, I get I get a little bit upset with all these these machines. You know, when you think about it, um, we you know when in the old days when we made cars, you know, it'd start at one end of the factory and you'd have you know a, a, a whole factory full of people that would bolt all these cars together, put put them together, and they'd come out the mm. other end, pleated think- and done off to the shop. And now they've got machines doing that. Yeah, and then you know. Years later, here we are, and we've got buses and taxis and all these things all getting robotic drivers and artificial intelligence and all these things. I and then you've got people saying that the the future of the future of jobs and the, in the future of kids, we need to all learn coding because coding is um, is the way of the future with software development. Mm. Blah blah blah. And I think to myself, we've got artificial intelligence. We're not going to write the code ourselves. So why are we trying to encourage all these kids to yeah. do code? Would, wouldn't the jobs of the future be the jobs that these robots and artificial intelligence can't do? Yes. Things like plumbers, plumbers and sparkies and well, you know, I guess well they they got those robots that can walk through doors now. You know, like, well, yeah, you know, as in like open the door, a swinging door, and walk through it and everything. But uh, but yeah, look, but it I, just doesn't leave many jobs, does it? If all these machines and robots and artificial intelligence keeps taking over all the You've got the, the shopping. Yeah, there was, there was yeah. an article today where a, a guy was saying we need to stop pre- telling people and pretending that artificial intelligence and technology is not going to take away jobs. The jobs going away. They've already started a long mm. time ago. Uh, you can't ago. blame the the Mexicans and the immigrants. And oh my God, it's the immigrants. They're taking our jobs. No, it's computers and AI. But they keep telling you it's the immigrants. So you don't get cranky at the computers. But yeah, I, but there's also yeah. like there's. Yeah. There's talk uh, at the moment over in the US after that school shooting about uh, like social cohesion and, you know, everyone's got their face, you go out to dinner facing phones and there's no inter- social interaction and, and whatnot and maybe that could be part of the issue. But, uh, and this is, this is just the same thing, isn't it? Like, it's nice to go to the shop and go through the checkout and you can have a chat to the person there and, and do whatever. Uh, That's look, if they want to chat to you. <laughs> it's <laughs> like... <laughs> Some of them don't. They're not, they're not all McDonald's staff with the pile. <laughs> but not like, all of them. But I think it's like, is it double AMI? I think whenever you ring double AMI, you'll get a person that answers the phone. Like, and it's just yeah. refreshing and it's just good. It like, is very refreshing. Yeah, because I think I rang like the tax office today and oh, the menuing system that you got to go through is just painful. And you know, you're, the one that you want is always the last one. <laughs> You know, it's yeah. always, and I'm pretty sure they do that because they're probably so busy. So instead of getting the whole music, they're, they're making you wait by going through all these menu options until you get yeah. to, yeah, it's With the least wanted sometimes ones Sometimes they start. do it. Yeah, that's sometimes right. Sometimes they do it really slow too for the people that can't keep up. So it's like, oh, I hate you know, that. Yes. this item, press oh. one. <laughs> I know, talk is when, when to this Hammer this Simpson was up the um, suggestions and... Uh, what to bet on and he rings up this number that was charged by the minute the guy's like the wind in <laughs> San Fran Cisco <laughs> is blowing from the west yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah I know it's just frustrating uh, Jace what it is nice to, it's nice to have real people on the other end it is either, either way on the phone or in a, in a, in a supermarket but things will come just, yeah, things will come back around. We'll, we'll have our we'll have our little go with the robots and everything, you know. But it's like books and records. Like records are coming back. The the books are sort of coming back. There's bookstores now, new books and stuff. Well, the uh, the um, the shops are coming back now that Amazon took away all the supermarkets and now they're buying supermarkets and putting stuff back into supermarkets <laughs> themselves. Yeah. So they can sell their own products from one aisle. Is it right? Hmm. Uh, all the different products. You just walk in, grab it what you want, walk out, and it automatically charges your Amazon account. There's no. Oh, so it's an Amazon kind of an Amazon 
Yeah, well, cat. they bought they bought Whole Foods, the whole company, and turned them into Amazon shops. And now they're selling stuff through the Whole Foods when they, originally they've been taking away all the shops and saying, don't worry, we'll deliver it to you within a day or maybe even four hours if you're nearby. But now they've gone back the other way. Now they're taking over. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Like mm. I, li- I like to try and I just chop local as much as I can, just to you know for services and whatnot. So um, yeah, it's good. Now, Jace, what what have you found this week? I'll do uh, to segue from your Google security about um, Edge. A Google security researcher has found multiple security flaws affecting the MuTorrent web and desktop client oh. that allow an attacker to infect a victim with malware or collect the data on users' past downloads. The vulnerabilities have been discovered by Google Project Zero security researcher Tavis Ormandy, and they impact MuTorrent Web, a new web-based version of the MuTorrent BitTorrent con- client, and MuTorrent Classic, the old MuTorrent client that most people know. Attacks rely on luring victims on malicious websites. Ormandy says that both MuTorrent clients are exposing an RPC server on port 10,000, and... Uh, port 19575 on the web version. The expert says that the attackers can hide commands inside web pages that interact with this open RPC server. The attacker only needs to trick a user with a vulnerable MuTorrent client to access a malicious web page. Furthermore, the MuTorrent clients are also vulnerable to DNS rebinding, a vulnerability that allows attacker to legitimize his request to the RPC server. Well, I guess at the end of the day... I I just learned something. What was that? Sorry. That's that. That's MuTorrent and not UTorrent. I didn't. Guess realize. who looked it up before the show? <laughs> that's what's going to. I thought it was UTorrent. I didn't realize that. I always thought it was like MicroTorrent or something because it's a uh, hmm? Greek stylized Mu. Talk about MuTorrent. I've yeah, never heard of this oh, I'm, I'm with you, uh, Jordan. I thought he's going. He's talking about me. I'm going. Is this a Mu or you or is Mu a new one or what? I had to Google it. I was going to stop you halfway through and say, "What <laughs> software are you talking about?" So it's MuTorrent. I stand corrected. I but, never noticed. But, but when it's typed, like you look, in when it's typed, if you can see in that first paragraph, it's referred it's to the Greek symbol Mu Torrent. Yeah. The U-Torrent. It's U-Torrent. But, if you the logo up, has, you can see the stylized Greek character. The logo clearly has an M in front of it. I've never noticed. Well, it looks like a U anyway. No, see how it's got a line at the start and then it goes up and down and then back down again. Yeah, but that could be... That's not an M, that's a U with a line on both sides, which makes it the Greek character Mu. Yeah, right. Oh, see, you know stuff about Greek. I wouldn't have picked it. Well, I didn't know that. That's what Wikipedia told me before the show, anyway. (laughs) Well, we've all learned something. Uh, Yeah, but... I mean, I I knew it. Rather than just getting on here and pronouncing it wrong. It's good. But I guess, you know, if you're using MuTorrent, well, you're probably doing a, a, a naughty Mew? thing. <laughs> so, uh, you uh, know. People are downloading, people only use it to download Linux ISOs, right? Yeah, pretty much. All the, yeah. all, all the Twitch. Only open source stuff is available. Yeah, exactly. All, all the Twitch shows. Didn't Leo used yeah, to yeah. push them out through the <laughs> torrents back in the days? Yeah. Some people are probably. And then now that, now that, you know, ISPs have blocked all those torrent sites. You can't even get the open source stuff anymore, so you're going to have to go and find some other Depends source. Depends on what ISP you've got. Mm. Yeah, so uh, there you oh, go. Or what VPN you use, either way. Well, we've, we've learned something there. It's MuTorrent. Because, like, it's every, like, you go to a business, like, to get, have a look at their setup or whatever, you know, and, like, they've got a problem with their outlook or something, you know, and you just go, you just have a look as you do, you know, what sort of uh, antivirus they run, and they got malware bite, blah, blah, blah. And, like, fair thing, about, like, you have to go, 60% of them have just got the little U-Torrent going in the background. <laughs> <laughs> or new torrent, you go. What's going on here? I, I've never installed it. I always nah, look for oh, stuff no. like that when when yeah. somebody has either done a screen share on YouTube or taken a screenshot of something on their screen. I always look at the mm. icons <laughs> at the bar down the bottom in the taskbars. What else have they got on yes. there? Yes, <laughs> well, you see they've got those, those people who have their desktop has got eighty to four hundred. Yeah icons on there every single program and all their folders with all their documents and absolutely everything's on the mine has got the garbage bin yeah nice yeah. nice that's what i have on my desktop the rest is just wallpaper yeah right i, I, use, I see these i use i what did desktop support for companies and i go can you fix up my computer i'm like really <laughs> really i use a um a great little application <laughs> called fences have you ever heard of that no it's no that. It's, it's for making, like, you can link it to folders or whatever on your desktop. 
So, and then you make little drawn out select boxes or square boxes that are transparent and you can put icon, you put folders or icons or everything in these, in these boxes. So you can categorize all of your icons on your desktop. That sounds mean. a bit too OCD for me. Uh, it looks, it's pretty cool. And then all you do is double click on the desktop and oh. it hides everything in those boxes once you've, so you can completely hide every icon on your desktop when you walk away if you want. Just double click it all, and you can also scroll. You know how you scroll your phone, side swiping left and right. You yeah. can have multiple pages of icons and just swipe left and right. Oh, Stardock. I know Stardock. Yes. Stardock. Yes, I have seen. Great application. Yeah, I didn't know. That, I didn't know it was know it as fences. Like, like I've seen it as Stardock. Yeah, it is good. It's like, uh, Looks 10 good. Ten bucks, I think, costs you to buy it. Right. That's it. The Stardock okay. company and another one of their apps. Yeah. yeah, it's not too bad. But but anything like Great that. But does it? How how much uh, pull does it put on the computer? You know the resources. I never noticed very much. Never noticed. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, okay. And to be honest, in this day and age of computers are getting pretty, pretty. Yeah, they're getting pretty fast these days. If you mm-hmm. if you're running an old, an old Pentium or something, you might have trouble. But no, with Vista. Oh, Vista. Oh, <laughs> Vista. <laughs> now, That's really talking. A couple yeah. of weeks ago, we learned that the uh, or part of iOS. Uh, boot code or sort or some sort of iOS code was leaked out onto the GitHub. Now there's a story this week about how it uh, apparently was leaked. Now this is just how things go, isn't it? Like, and you'd have to still question the like the validity of the actual story as well. But I'll get to that bit in a minute. But anyway, the the reason the the reason behind it is in 2016, a low level employee probably check out chick working at apple's cupertino headquarters was convinced by some of his friends in the jailbreaking community to steal some apple source code for their own security research so first question i would have is why would a low-level employee have access to this anyway do they just what is it just come up as desktop wallpaper when you when their employees log in like what happens why would think that would be secure wouldn't you you would think so yeah uh the group of friends never intended this on the source code leaking from the initial bunch but nearly a year after the code was stolen someone inside the group gave it to someone else who shouldn't have had it well neither no no one should have had it but anyway so then it went outside of this tight little group it's unclear who exactly leaked the code outside the initial group of friends but uh, by 2017, people far removed from the initial group had gained access to the stolen code and began sharing the code on the forums. Now, Apple claimed that the leaked code is not a security risk for most, if any, users, but some claim the code could still grant attacker insight in potential vulnerabilities and bugs in the key part of the phone's ecosystem. Yeah, so that's what happens. It can't be as bad as the root user access that we had a few months back. No, no. Maybe this story was pushed by Apple just to, you know, overshadow and move that other root story off. Move that one out of the... That was a pretty stupid... That was pretty bad. That was just just stupid. (laughs) Yeah, but it's been like that for years. They rave about how great their security is. Mm. Yeah, that's right, that's right. They Uh, can't keep their own secrets, let alone ours. No, no. What else have you got, Jordan? You got another story there? I did have another little story there. If I can, where did my uh, where did my edge go? <laughs> oh no, it's it's crashed. It's bugged oh, out. No, he's lost his edge. <laughs> yes. Oh, because you okay? We I had this as a segue before, but I think uh, I think we had another segue instead. Uh, technology to transform direct mail in 2018. Oh. Um, okay. With the rise of companies turning to direct mail, the techno- technol- technological advances and developments in the industry are staggering. Direct mail is one of the more traditional forms of marketing, one that has been put to bed and uh, but has now been resurrected. In the digital age, direct mail is experiencing a boom with the world's biggest social media platforms such as Facebook turning to the advertising technique in 2018 customers expected more from brands and subsequently their marketing campaigns their digital footprint uh reveals their buying habits uh wants needs and even photos they take and companies need to produce innovative uh ads to hold onto their existing consumer base i'm getting tired i can tell while expanding their reach washington uh, direct mail a leading direct mail house in the uk are revealing the trends uh they are now uh witnessing change and f- uh change the face of the industry permanently 
According to the recent studies, more than 269 billion emails are sent daily. And the chances of marketing campaigns getting lost in the sea of spam is only set to increase as we rely more on technology. However, compared to the statistic, direct mail is said to be kept in the house for 17 days with at uh, with 87% of consumers trusting messages within direct mail and only 48% trusting what is said in the emails. With the I rise think- in company to direct mail with technological advances in developing uh, development in the industry are staggering i think so, yeah i think those stats bringing that, back the old stuff as you said before bringing back you know i don't know about uh, direct mail outs <laughs> i think oh when i was when i was well, learning about that stuff i think i suppose it, in australia just post is what i suppose i was just thinking of more of junk mail and things like that but i think know, like, like the stats of that success is even like one percent you know, something like that. But but how's this? The but it kind of makes sense, though. I mean, how much spam do you get and how much do you actually read it? How much do you mm. actually take notice of it? Whereas you get junk mail in your letterbox. I, I know from my, myself experience that if junk mail comes from Auto Cheap or Kmart or whatever, I get that on my mail and I, I can't wait to read it. I know people <laughs> who are excited. That they're like, yay, I've got junk mail. I've got to read through these things. Yeah. It's fantastic. I know someone like that, too. He, I think he's got a blue shirt on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, so I just thought that was interesting that companies are now finding that maybe sending it out via direct mail, whether it be the, through the post or whatever, and maybe not in Australia but in the US, mm. <laughs> that they're getting a higher success rate. So does that mean we're going to start seeing more junk mail in our letterboxes rather than spam email? Look, well, every we'll never seen spam email, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like every now and then I do go through, like I get sick of seeing some certain types of emails. I go through, look for the unsubscribe button, you know, do do that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, other times, look, I'll subscribe to things just because I thought, oh, they're pretty interesting. I wouldn't mind just to keep in the loop, you know, like, but then if you get one in your inbox, you just delete it anyway. But you're sort of just yeah. in that, in the loop, if you know what I mean, just, you know, hanging on the yeah. outside, just in there. Oh, there's been ones that I've unsubscribed to and they still keep coming. No, they're not loud. Now, I reckon that's a trick in itself, the unsubscribe button, because it's just a confirmation that you're there, really, isn't it? Well, it is. It is, I guess. Uh, but the stats that you said in that article there, 269 billion emails are sent a day. A billion? Billion emails are sent a day. <laughs> I don't want to be a, an email billionaire. <laughs> no. no. Remember the, I'm not going to sing it. Remember that, that idea that was pushed around that the Australia Post were going to charge, I don't know, five cents an email or something? That was a long yeah. time ago. Oh. Oh. Kind of like the you know, look, um, look at... tape tax. <laughs> when yes. people started copying stuff from CDs and stuff, they're like, oh, we have to put a blank tape tax because yes. everyone's just going to copy it for their friends. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. But, you know, the post office, when you think about it, there was a time there I heard that they were, they were struggling, but they'd have to be doing all right now with the amount of packages and eBay and Amazon. Well, they were struggling because the CEO was one of the highest paid people (laughs) in the whole of Australia, getting millions of dollars every year, and they kicked him out and cut the pay right down, and now they're starting to make money again. Yeah. (laughs) I think he was on about six million or something, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was on a a lot of money. Uh, But But they do it right out of their packages, but... Yeah. Uh, Look, Australia Post, like, I think... Uh, yeah, they probably they probably do all right out of their packages. You're right. The the posties, the normal letters, like you don't get many letters these days. Well, I don't anyway. It's uh, I still get the bills. I don't like online bills, uh, because I prefer it. If I could get everything online, all of my bills and everything, I'd do it. You know what's great about getting an online bill, Glenn? What's it? You get it a hell of a lot earlier than you get it if you get it in the mail. Oh, excellent! So you can pay it earlier. But you can- you can kind of pay it on time and not cop that interest. Well, that's and with the, the new pay ID, you can pay it instantly. Have you seen ads for that now? Oh, I've heard of something. Yes, I've heard of something like that. But yeah, the, I signed up for pay ID through my bank. So what you do is you create a pay ID for whichever account is your main transaction one. You create an ID, which is preferably something like your uh, email address. Don't use your phone number because now you have to give everybody your phone number, don't you? But email, at least, if somebody tries to get you, you can get rid of it. But um, so I put uh, one of my email addresses on there, and in the future, if I say to someone, uh, someone says, oh, I owe you $100, I've got to pay it to you, you give them the pay ID. When they put it on the computer, it appears instantly in your bank. You don't have to wait three to five days for it to clear and stuff like that. Yes, yes. That's faster than paper. You don't need BSB and account numbers that can be typed in wrong and all this crap. You just give them your email address or whatever, and bang, there's the money there. That's Lauren, pretty good. Yeah, Lauren. The post office, 
the post office do a something similar, don't they? For for your bills, they'll they'll take all your bills. Yeah, and they got to put post pay or something. An inboxing or something. Yeah, yeah, but like the only reason I don't like the bills uh, online is because like I missed one once, and like it was a uh, I think it was the rates, and then I think I just haven't had a rates for a while, so I rang them up, and uh, they said, "Well, you're overdue." And I missed out on my discount. I said, well, what about my discount? She goes, ah, oh, I had the same can't get that. Yeah, they, they're they tight, are they? They wouldn't give it to me. I was a day late on my motor pass bill, a day late, and they charged me 48 bucks. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's terrible. So, a day um, late. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, so I don't know what you did, but I just said, well, take me off this online business straight away and send it out to me by post. So I least... ended up creating just a separate email account and I only ever give that mm. out. It's got no junk mail, just that's the only one I use for bills. I've gone over to the side of, I've got a few direct debits now. It just makes life easy, doesn't it? <laughs> really? Yeah. You know, it just does. Um, with all the discounts that are offered for people who pay on time, like I'm with Lumo for some of my energy stuff, you pay on time, you get your discounts. So it's it's worth yeah. having the direct debit, getting well, it online. Yeah, it can be like 17 to 20%. Mm. I'm I get 30%, yeah, somewhere yeah. thereabouts. Well, I'm with this Alinta. I think they're, they're not just Queensland. Yeah, and they've just bumped me up from 25 to 30%. So discount. I haven't heard of them. I use the, I use Diamond. Never Is it on the them. services as well or just the, uh, the, just the per kilowatt or whatever they do? Uh, well, discount. it's 30% on the bill. That's all. Well, that's all. You want to get it on the whole bill. We might get it on the surface and some of them only do it on the. um, Yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't. Usage. Look, I don't know. I've never really, really calculated it out. But when you read all their, their, you know, their literature and stuff, it's well, no, just on the surface, it's sort of. It, really, it sort of gives you the idea that it's just 30%. But, but Yeah, well, a lot of people don't realise that it's it's off. a lot of the time you're getting a discount just off your usage and not so much off hmm. off the surface. Then they, they have the um, supply charges and access yeah. charges. And all this I'll have to look into that. that. Hmm. But have a look at this, Alinta. Hmm. They're the best ones I've found. I even rang up, I think it was Energy Australia, who I was with, and I said, oh, look, Alinta's giving me 25. You can only give me 18. And she goes, oh, I'll see what I can do. She comes back and says, oh, we give you 21. And I went, no. Nah. I said, 25. You've got, look, you've got to look at their <laughs> rates as well. Like you, 30, you, up 30, 30. We've got to go over somebody else. We've got 50%. Hey, we've got 50%. Well done. Yeah. You've right. got to have a look at their rates as well. They might be offering, offering you more discount than than, than the other uh, the other company around the corner. Yeah. But their rates might be more expensive. No, Linda's a good one. 27% off your electricity usage charges. Yes, yeah. okay. So there's the usage. Yeah, so yeah, but any but in it yes, but you check your And their usage your, charges per kilowatt might be more than someone else. You just don't yeah. know. No, these these were good. These guys were good. They were like a half a cent less than who I was with as well. So these guys are really yeah. good. Uh so yeah. through the week I message oh went out. Can you believe it? Telstra, cust- Telstra customers only, unable to send iMessages on the iPhone. The world collapsed for many people. A Telstra mobile oh. <laughs> A Telstra mobile oh, issue. Oh, I know. Me. No. I don't have an iPhone. Wouldn't wouldn't the message just send by SMS anyway if the iMessage was down or it couldn't do it? I don't know. No. But it keeps trying. That's pro- one of the problems because it's it's con- configured that if the iMessage service knows that you've got an iPhone and the person you're sending to has got an iPhone, it only routes it through iMessage which means when you sell your iPhone, you get an Android phone, suddenly you're missing a lot of messages because people are sending it to you and it's going to your iMessage, which doesn't exist anymore. So it sits on the Apple server and people ring up. They're like, oh, my God, but the messages are not working. You're like, well, they are. They're going to your iMessage, which doesn't exist. If you had a, a MacBook Pro or an iPad, the messages would go there still. Mm. But um, as soon if you have an iPhone and you sell it and you switch to... Android phone or <laughs> Windows phone, <laughs> you, have, you have to log on and either disassociate that from it's your amazing. iPhone so it won't send it through iMessage anymore. Yeah, or right. bring up Apple and Windows. Take this off. Yeah, so uh, yes, but anyway, like, oh, well, I've had issues where I've sent the te- it sent it and it didn't work and it came up exclamation mark says, "Do you want to send this as a text?" I don't know what that was but anyway i said yes and it went off so i don't know what that is but anyway well it, it, sending it as a text would be an sms wouldn't it is that, is that well yes that's mean? right but after yep. it i assumed it tried to uh send it as a i message it didn't yeah and, and, and air it and then offered you to send it as an sms yeah but in any case i always i was always led to believe too that oh, look, israel 
Israel's calling. <laughs> so we're going to answer that. Now, um, yeah, I always delete in the settings too that it, it by default it sends to iMessage first, and if it can't, I thought it automatically went to turn SMS. I'm like, well, you, that's what I thought. Or... Yeah, that's what I thought. But well, I don't have an iPhone in front of me to check those settings. So, but is this something that you would complain about? You know, it was only down for two hours or something. Like, you know, but Twitter Depends on how important the messages are if you. A business type person, and um, you need uh, need deals and stuff like that happening, or you know, investor, and you need the information is important. You might get notifications from things. Fair or enough. Or if um, or if you want to be cool, because yeah. you know, every report I ever read is that if you get if you get a green message, it is so uncool. Oh. If you get a blue message, right. it is way. Cool. That's what they say. Well, so if, and if also, not, hey, hey, honey, I I can't uh, weird going on. Yeah, the train's it's... broken down. I need you to pick up the kids in the next half hour because the um, the daycare centre is going to close and uh, there won't be anybody there. Oh, sorry, I didn't get the message for two hours. Fair enough. Rightio. You know that there was a difference in colours in your messages, Glenn? Yes. So the green is SMS and the blue is for iMessage. Yeah. 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 Yes, I know. Yes. So I um... may not know what I was talking about. I thought I'd mention that. So one Twitter user suggested the issue had to do with Telstra DNS servers and claimed it could be remedied by pointing devices to an alternative service such as Google. One Twitter user was so upset about it. Poor old Nate. This Telstra iMessage outage is an absolute disaster. I've already had to ring two people I didn't really want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to, to stand corrected, it's, it's, it's a Telstra... It's still a Telstra message. It's not the iMessages were still working, weren't they? As yeah, Glenn said, it was Telstra it was routing that was broken mm. from your phone. You still got it on your iPad. So saying that it's an iMessage outage from Telstra, it's not an iMessage. It's a normal message outage from Telstra. It's not Apple related. In, in no, in that's right. Way. But Telstra so, goes. Telstra goes uh, when they. I'm were defending asked, Apple there. There's a first. <laughs> it was. But it was intriguing then when Telstra was asked what was happening. They go, "Oh, we're working very close with Apple to get this fixed." You know, <laughs> nothing to do with that. I know. <laughs> Uh, Jace, better spin us another one of yours. Oh, picture this. You're driving home from work contemplating what to make for dinner and as you idle at a red light near you, your neighbourhood pizzeria, an ad offering $5 off a pepperoni pie appears on your dashboard screen. Are you annoyed that your car is trying to sell you something or pleasantly persuaded? Telenav Inc., a company developing in-car advertising software, oh, is betting you won't mind much. Car companies looking to earn some extra money hope so too. Automakers have been installing wireless connections in vehicles and collecting data for decades. But the sheer volume of software and sensors in new vehicles combined with artificial intelligence that can sift through data at ever quickening speeds That's means good. new services and revenue streams are quickly emerging. The big question for automakers now is whether they can profit off all the driver data they've been ca they're capable of collecting without alienating consumers or risking backlash from Washington. Car makers recognize they're fighting a war over customer data. Your driving behavior, location has monetary value, not unlike your search activity. Car makers' ultimate objective, he said, is to build a database of consumer preferences that could be aggregated and sold outside to outside vendors for marketing purposes, much like Google and Facebook do today. I don't know. There's enough ads. What what are they gonna give you? Like what you know, like Oh, I, I Save guess money on petrol. Well, I guess if they're beneficial, maybe I could handle it. I guess you, you pull into town and there's four petrol stations there, and one's got ten cents off per liter at the moment. Yeah, yep, I'm going to go that one. Yeah, I guess mm. so. I guess so. I guess that's all right. I wonder. I wonder because um, my new car that I just bought has got a an app that connects to your car, and they've just got a competition system at the moment where it it always measures your driving. Um, the way that you drive and it tells you if you're very ecological or not and and so it, if you start off too fast and then you brake too suddenly and stuff like this it records as bad against your driving when you finish driving it sends you a pop-up message saying good driving bad driving or whatever <laughs> but they have competitions that are countrywide and you can get points for driving uh, nicer, starting off slower, braking slower and stuff like this. So the more points that you rack up, it actually shows you a 
a listing of who's coming number one in the best driving stakes. Yeah, right. How good is that? So they're collecting all that data as well, which is probably interesting for them. They know it's where you've gone, where from to. Mm. I remember when I learned to drive, I was always told, I think my dad always used to say, you know, because you know how you, you know, you drive. 10 push... and 12. 10 and 12. Yeah, that one. That No. <laughs> 10 and 12. What's that? Uh, 10 and 2. Yes, 10, 10 and 2. I got <laughs> 10 and 12. But no, he used to say, when you put. Like, not, not just six. No, you probably drive mostly at six now. <laughs> yeah. Half past Haughty six, boy. Yeah. boy. Half past six. You know, you can, you, know, you, can buy, you can buy those those little bolt-on balls that go on your steering wheels. So oh, I love it! I love them. I know. I want one like yeah. a bus one. You can oh. Just rest the other arm on the oh. window. You are just talking. Relax. You Eat are chips. You are talking sense now. I've always wanted you could one of those. Even talk on the phone, couldn't you? I know yeah, you could. No problems there. But yeah, and I was always yeah. taught that when you accelerate, you over and say, "You're not allowed to talk on your phone. You're going to have hands free." I've got one free. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when you accelerate, it's you accelerate like you've got an egg between your foot and the pedal, and that's how oh. that's how you do it. It's uh, like that. What was that movie years ago? Where the I can't remember what it was. It was one of those comedy movies where the, the, the driving instructor was going out with the with the young guy. Might have been Police Academy or something like that. I can't remember. And he had a glass of water on the dashboard, driving around, and had to <laughs> make sure the glass of water didn't fall off the dashboard. No, you know what movie that was. My my auntie did something like that one time. She hopped in the car and drove down the road, and there was some roadworks, and so she pulled over because um, they had the stop sign up there and the guy walked over to a window and she's like, winds it down. She's like, yes, what is it? And he reaches onto the roof and says, would you like your coffee? I think it's cooled down now. <laughs> she put the coffee cup on the roof before Excellent. she went for a drive and it didn't spill, it didn't smash or anything. So she said, you know, this got to prove that I'm a really good driver, right? Well, it does. <laughs> Full marks, pass, pass. So she passed. Now, look, just quickly, the uh, MBN reports progress but no timeline for the hfc fix mbn bill morrow says the company is yet is not yet ready to reveal a timeline for completing work on the hfc portion of the network he says we are now conducting upgrade work to improve the service quality on hfc and it's still too early to be specific on timelines for releasing this footprint all i know is that the guys are in our street digging something up so hopefully that was for a good cause uh but so hopefully soon hopefully more soon copper glenn more copper yeah, that's right. And look, I'm just going to quickly go through this last story of mine anyway, then we'll just uh, wrap it up with the other guys. I think they've got a couple left pretty quick. Uh, there's a, there's an app called Thrive for Android users. Now, what this does, if you think you're on your phone too much, and I think we've spoken about that before, uh, and even tonight, even this episode, you know, get it, when you go to the restaurant, get it out of your face and talk to people. Uh, for Android, so th- there are various settings and options depending on how you want to be cut off from your apps and friends. So what happens is oh, you, you can block, say, your Facebook usage or whatever. So, uh, yeah. You can it, limit it. Yeah, in, mm. if a specific app eats into your day, turn it on in the app control is setting a daily usage limit. Once that's reached, you won't be able to clash any clans or insta any grams until midnight. The app tracks usage over time too, making it even handy to get generous limits. Uh, all these stories and links, if you want to know more about these stories, you can go to the aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast webpage and click on show notes. And so you one- can watch the Facebook while you're at work. That's right. And one from Jace. I saw Jace. I didn't know Apple... You're, you're assuming there that I've got enough... <laughs> Uh, control of myself that I want to limit myself. Some people don't, apparently. No, no, some people don't. Uh, but, and uh, just going, leading into one of your How stories. How many times have you looked at your phone, your, your Facebook during this podcast, Jason, at all? Not. Not once? Uh, not once. <laughs> <laughs> not once. Not once. Uh, yeah, but Apple, they're I've in. I've a smartwatch that's popped up a couple of times, but I haven't looked at it. No, oh, well, my phone rang. You know, someone's left a message and I go, oh, yeah. Catch them, Get mate. that later. Um, yeah, Apple is is buying old old programming languages. Jace? Oh, cool. No. <laughs> oh, that's Are Cobalt. They? No, they're, bu- they're buying something out of the mine. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are they... Yeah, yeah. What are they buying? Yes, they used to have Cobalt as a programming system on their <laughs> computers, but that's not this. On their front and loaders. <laughs> yeah. Apple is in talks to buy long-term supplies of Cobalt directly from miners for the first time, according to people familiar with the matter, seeking to ensure it will have enough of the key battery ingredient amidst industry fears of a shortage driven by the electrical vehicle boom. 
The iPhone maker is one of the first, the world's largest end users of cobalt for the batteries and its gadgets, but until now has left the business of buying the metal. Seek the adventure. Be bra- These talks show that the tech giant is keen to encar- ensure that the cobalt supplies for its iPhone and iPad batteries are sufficient with a rapid growth in battery demand for electric vehicles threatening to create a shortage of the raw material. About a quarter of global cobalt production is used in smartphones. Apple is seeking contracts to secure several thousand metric tons of cobalt a year for five Ooh. years or longer. Yeah, right. Wowzers. Wowzers. And uh, mm. so cobalt, in, cobalt is in high demand. <laughs> Not many people yeah. programming cobalt either these days. Apparently, no. it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's all finished. And uh, just quickly, uh, Jace, you've got another one, just uh, preservation of game servers. Okay, yeah, I'll do that one. Uh, I'll have to scroll up now because I was looking at a different story. Oh, sorry. A group of video game preservationists wants the legal right to replicate abandoned servers in order to re-enable defunct online multiplayer games for gameplay for study. The game industry says those efforts would hurt their business, allow the theft of their copyrighted content, and essentially let breach searches blur the line between preservation and play. Both sides are arguing their case to the U.S. Copyright Office right now, submitting lengthy comments on the subject as part of the Copyright Register's triennial review of exemptions to the DMCA. Analyzing the arguments on both sides shows how passionate both industry and academia are about the issue and how mistrust and misunderstanding seems to have infected the debate. The complete argument goes go into much more arcane detail over the definition of a transformative use the possible consequences of encouraging jailbroken consoles to re-enable online play and what exactly counts as non-commercial preservation. Reading over both arguments, though, it feels like preservationists in the industry are talking past each other a bit. Mm. When one side seeks limited private access to historical gameplay, the other fears a slippery slope leading to public distribution of hacked open servers where one side sees games sitting unplayable for lack of attention from their makers, the other sees a valuable back catalogue vault that should be able to open and close at will. Can't they just, like, you know, like, the people that want to keep them going, uh, if they're making money out of it, can't they just, like, just, I don't know, give, give licenses, license fee to the people that made it or something? Like, that'd be, you, you think know, so? you think they'd be doing something like that. Uh, all right, I know we're rushing through because we must have just got onto some tangents through this... <laughs> through this show as, as if uh, Glenn as, as if how dare you I know I know I need to listen to the two greatest podcasters more you know to get some uh, better tips on time management of podcasting I can shorten my story for you if you like and just give you the headline of it oh well, give us the life. give us the headline and the the little bit about it so we know what's what's happening yeah, I won't go into too much detail, but it was just, it interested me because I didn't think, I didn't even know Android did it, but apparently Android 9.0 is going to block access to the microphone from its idling apps in the background. So oh. did, that, did that happen once before in Android 8.0? They've been able to listen to us oh, yeah. whenever they like and use our camera whenever they like. Apparently uh, 9.0 will take another step ahead uh, and block access to the camera and the microphone in its um, up-and-coming version of Android. Very secure. Because I think they had problems with... It'll be good for security and for, they reckon, making the phone a bit faster as well because it won't be trying... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They probably... Was it Android on those... What would have been on those Samsung TVs that were spying on everyone? Was that Android Mm. on those? Probably. Well, it's the same operating system on those compared as a phone. It would be very similar. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think can we're... I just do a quick, quick... Yes, bit? you can. A couple of years back, Mattel and Tinker partnered up to produce programming lessons based on Hot Wheels and Monster High. Now the two companies are expanding their partnership to launch seven new Barbie-themed coding lessons this coming summer. Oh. The curriculum aimed at teaching girls about computer programming will also expose them to large to the potential careers like becoming a veterinarian, astronaut, or robotics engineer. The large goal is to introduce coding to 10 million kids by 2020. Wow, that's all right. That's great. I know I yeah. signed up uh, for, I don't know, what was it? It was a Code Kingdoms for the kids to learn how to do a bit of coding, you know, the Minecraft. And yep. it, was, oh, it was really good. And they, they really enjoyed it. But you know what? They're, that Code Kingdom, like their billing system is just, Pretty much totally unusable. I I have no. I got lost in the whole thing. I couldn't work out how to do it. I, I yep. had to message them in England to say I can't work this out. What the hell is going on? And they've just said, "Oh, we'll just set it up for you." So they set it up for it. Then I go, 
how do I get billed for this? Because I have to set up the kids' accounts and my account. One account could be the the parent account, but that, that couldn't do this and couldn't do it. It was so confusing. I just thought, you guys are crazy. And uh, I mm. and I just thought, well, I would have continued with it, but it, it blew my mind how I, I just I didn't have the stamina to go back into it to, to renew, to pay them any more. Can you imagine for non-technical people trying to cope with it if you can't do it? Oh, I know. I know. They must exactly. just... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, they must have you need uh, some artificial intelligence to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. So you could have you could have bought it for a year or a, a uh, six months or something. But I just wanted to test it for a month. And uh, but you know, if you bought it for six months, I guess you're right. You only have to go through the trouble every six months. But geez, it was hard. I don't know if they're going to fix that up or not. But Co Kingdoms, if you're listening. Sort it out. Give yourselves an uppercut. Co Kingdoms. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourselves an uppercut. Never used- uh, all right, cool. Well, that's just uh, yeah. I didn't bit of, really know what it is. <laughs> yeah, they they teach kids the Minecraft coding, so it, it works pretty good. The kids really liked it. I have to look for another one. I think there's a free one around somewhere. Uh, yeah. So cool. AussieTechEds.com.au forward slash podcast is the website to go to. Don't forget if you want to be able to create a free website with a perfect new looking theme, you can for free on just on one of our plans using the site pad. Not as powerful as WordPress, but geez, if you, if you just want something quickly, geez, it's going to give you. I'm, I'm considering doing a uh, uh, using one of those scenes for as part of my site. So I'll let you know when I'm finished and I'll show you how what I can do. Uh, but yeah, go to athwebhosting.com.au and anything else anyone wants to bring up apart from tea? That's it. Uh, just the Aussie Tech Crypto. <laughs> oh, yeah, Aussie Tech Crypto. You don't need any more advertising. You're going too strong. We've got to slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can always say if you've got, if you've got any, uh, any listeners down here in the Mornage Peninsula, they can pop in and check me out at a gig if you want. Oh, yeah, where are you playing? Where are you playing? I'm, playing? I'm playing at the Royal Hotel in Mornington on Saturday night with this 70s band that I've oh. never, ever sung before. <laughs> right. I'm going to sing 70s. Yo, it could be fun just to come and watch me fluff it. So how do you know the songs? How do you learn the do you learn the songs or what happens there? I can hear you, but I think I've just can you hear me? Frozen. Yeah. So with can you the, hear me? Yes. Are we back you on? Can, yeah. yeah, I don't know, but as long as you can hear me. Um yeah, oh, it just um I've just been learning the songs all week. That's probably why my stories are a bit thin. <laughs> I've had to learn things like um, you know, celebration and and um all right. September. Do you, right? you remember? You know that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and uh, get down on it and can we, feel good by Jane Brown, can, things like that. So even though we're not I there. I a lot of them on my, on my retro radio show every Wednesday night. Come and sing on the retro show. Is that what you said? No, I have a radio show at the local community radio station called Retro Regeneration. I play uh, right. 70s, 80s, 90s. Well, I think this band is called Marmalade Machine. So if you want to look them up. There's, cool. a, there's a woman who sings as well, so I have to sing with her. And if all goes well, they want me to start doing gigs with them. We'll be travel, traveling all around. I think we've got to get up to Albury, one, right. one, I think, next month and a few different places. Nice. How lucky you, a, how lucky you that that. With 70 songs, hey? How when lucky are you going to Rabina? <laughs> I have no idea. Tour. <laughs> Marmalade on tour. Yeah, aren't you lucky, that, aren't you lucky that Horses doesn't, uh, wasn't in the 70s? Yeah, well, that's right. Isn't it? Not, they can't chant and scream at me for K Sand or horses. They'll be screaming. Yeah. For, um, well, God knows what. I, I'll I, scream I, out. Honestly, I can't think of all. I used to DJ years ago, and I remember all these old songs like YMCA and yeah. Blame It on the Boogie. Like, how's I that? Was, oh, how's thinking, that? How am I going to think those things, hey? How's that? I messed how's about. about I, I caught you out. How's, how's that? that? It could be amusing. I don't know if it you want to be. anyone in the area that wants to pop in and have a laugh at me. I'll be more than happy. Oh, you, you, should, you should live stream that one. Yeah. And we could send you requests by text. By <laughs> text. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. All right, let's get out of here. But I think, yeah, uh, I'm not sure how good the the 3G is down there. <laughs> Might be lucky to get 4G if you're lucky, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, good luck with that, and I uh, hope you. Uh, yeah, hope, hope you that find is, your way back. Out of, out of just out of out of fun though. If anybody does, if there is, is any listeners that do happen to be in the area and you do come down, let let yourself be known so we know what happened. Yeah, so, but if, if you do, if you do, if you do, yeah, come down. Just say hi and say you listen to the show, and I'll know. 
and we'll we'll talk about it next time. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, thanks, everyone, for tuning in for another week. And uh, keep your eyes out, yeah, for the Aussie Tech Crypto, the Aussie Max Zone, and uh, everything else that goes around and around and around. And keep your eyes out for Jordan down at the Mornington Peninsula, stuck in the <laughs> 70s for the week. All right. so <laughs> stung with this bear before. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. that's a, you've got to be so tight, aren't you? Just, now, all right. Never even <laughs> I'm just going to walk in there and hope for the best. <laughs> I hope, you're, I hope you're getting there like start playing at about 11 o'clock at night when everyone's sloshed. They wouldn't know the difference. No, I think it, yeah, that'd be good. No, I think we start about 8, so everyone's going to be just warming up. Oh, yeah, so, geez. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Mm. Thanks, Jase. Thanks for coming in. Might see, see you again next week. Thanks, Jordan. We'll see you hopefully next week if you survive. <laughs> okay, good stuff. It'll be fun. I'll Cheers. let you know how it goes. Cheers, everyone. Don't forget, we're on the YouTube as well. If you're listening to this every week and want to know what we look like, just dial up at Aussie Tech Heads on the YouTube. All right, till next week, have fun, and uh, see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.